Welcome to the Lifestyle First podcast, discussing lifestyle medicine and making self-care as easy as one, two, three. One question, two research reviews, and three actionable health tips, all centered around the Lifestyle First method, your blueprint for the 10 key roots of optimal health and happiness. And now your host, lifestyle medicine physician and coach, Dr. Alka Patel. Hello and welcome to season six, episode 11. It is a bonus episode today with me. And I'm asking the question, what is health? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself that question? We talk about health so much, but what actually is it? What is your definition of health? What are your beliefs about health? What do you believe creates health? And what do you believe creates disease? Now, it might be easy to answer the question, what is health, with the single word, everything. Health is everything. You've got to agree with that right now. The world is shouting that out to us loud and clear. But it's actually taken me over 20 years as a doctor to really, really figure out what health is. You see, when I was at medical school, I learned about health. I learned about thousands and thousands of diseases. I had a brain in my hand to see firsthand what diseases of the brain look like. I cut open bodies to look inside and see diseases of the gut, the dying heart muscles, cancerous lungs. I talked to hundreds and hundreds of patients who showed me diseases of the mind. I sat in lecture after lecture, learning about what goes wrong in the human body and the human mind. As a medical student, I thought I was learning about health, but I wasn't. I was learning about illness. Not a single eminent professor, senior lecturer or respected researcher taught me anything about health. All I learned about at medical school was illness. And even the World Health Organization failed to teach me anything about health because the World Health Organization got it wrong in their very definition of health as a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being. Think about that definition. Health is a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being. Now, how many times have you been in that complete state? How long have you stayed in that complete state? As I'm talking to you, my neck's feeling quite stiff and achy, so I'm clearly not in a complete state of physical health. And I'm worried about how I'm going to prepare a run of talks I've been asked to do in the next few weeks on time. So I'm clearly not in a complete state of mental health. And when you start doubting your health, you immediately think that you need to find someone to fix it. Because in that very definition, what the World Health Organization automatically did was to medicalize health. Because the minute that you dip from that complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being, you define yourself as not having health, as being unwell. And if you're unwell, what do you do? Well, of course, you find your way to your doctor's consulting room and you hand over your health so that it can be fixed and you get back to that complete state of well-being. We live in societies with high levels of medical dependency because our societies have created the belief in us that we can't manage our own health. I'm often consulting online at six o'clock in the morning. And this week even, I saw a patient with a sore throat early in the morning. And when I asked him, so how long have you had the sore throat? I got the answer. Oh, it just started this morning when I woke up. Yeah, so the first thing you think to do is to seek out a doctor rather than self-manage. Now that of course is slightly better than the patient who booked an early appointment with me for insomnia and then failed to answer the call because he was sleeping. Or the person who wanted to lose weight, but just didn't feel like exercising. And it's stories like this that I've been hearing every single day for the last 20 years that have helped me understand what health is and what health is not. 
Health is a skill. It's an ability. And like with any ability, you can get better and better and better at it by using the simple tools that evolution has gifted to us. The ability to adapt and the ability to self-regulate and self-care. Health is a skill that enables you to regulate and adapt to the demands that are placed on you. That is the definition of health. And more than that, health is a skill that enables you to take the front wheel and drive your own life journey. Health is a skill that enables you to be the architect who designs your own life. Health is a skill that enables you to be the conductor of the symphony of your life. Because I truly, truly believe we have already been gifted with everything we need to have health. Physically, your body is able to maintain physiological equilibrium. It's designed for this. Mentally, you have the capacity for choice, the ability to choose where to focus your attention. And socially, you have opportunity for both solitude and enjoying your own presence right here and right now, as well as connecting in the presence of others. You can have physical mental and social well-being by understanding that human health is not a status. It's dynamic, it's moving, it's agile, it's a skill. Health is a doing word and if you haven't already please do go and listen to my TEDx talk Health is a Verb Not a Noun where I do talk more about this. So you have everything you need to self-regulate your health and the way to self-regulate and the way to self-care is, of course, through your lifestyle. It's everything you've been listening to in this podcast over these six seasons, thinking about your life's purpose and what drives you to get out of bed every single morning, having a strong sense of identity and knowing who you are choosing the food that enters you and choosing the exercise that exudes from you so you can be a part of the space around you, marvel at what your body can do. You have the gift of sleep to allow your mind and your body to regenerate. You can take time out to relax and repair, to understand the value of your connections, to tap into the emotions that provide the momentum for lasting change. And all you need to do is to first make a commitment to the vitality you get by valuing your health through your lifestyle. Now, I know that through this podcast, you will have learned so much. I've learned so much. But have you turned knowledge into action? Be really, really honest with yourself. What are you doing differently? Remember, health is a verb. You've got to take actions, small actions, massive actions you choose. So let's just maybe reflect back on this season's incredible, inspiring guests and pick just three actions to take from this season if you haven't already. So episode one, Zach Ballinger said, ask people around you what you're good at. Try that. You'll be amazed at what people say. Let me know if there was anything that surprised you. Episode two, Lenise McGee said, decide if you are worth finding out who you really are. Do that. Decide. You spend the most time with yourself. Do you know you? Episode three, Gillian Riley, she said, recognize your freedom of choice about what you eat and don't eat. So think about that. You have freedom. No one is spoon feeding you. That next mouthful you take, have you chosen it? Episode four was Lauren Parsons and she said snack on four minutes of exercise every day. I love that four minutes and we can all move in a way we love. Episode five was Daniel Gartenberg and what did he say? Be consistent with your circadian rhythm habits. Get into the rhythm of your day. How are you starting your day? Episode six, Jessica Kotick said, acknowledge and notice your body in the moment. And I love, love, love this. Your body is such a gift, whatever size and shape. Give gratitude for your body. Feel your feet on the ground at everything that your body can do. Episode seven was Patty Mola. And she said, practice swapping the words you and I. Have you tried this? Try it in your next conversations. It is magic. 
Episode eight was Marco Badwell, and he said, change your environment to serve your habits. So look around you right now. What is helping you with the habits that you want to create and what is hindering you? Episode nine, Lois Wagner, she said, accept and experience your emotion after adversity. Now, we've all faced tough challenges. That is part of being human. But let yourself feel the emotion of it. It's the only way to release it. And episode 10 was Derek Grant. And he said, take time to be still. Start from within you. And it's so true. Just take a few minutes for stillness. Time to know what you want to give to the world today. Because you deserve a life of vitality and joy and health and happiness. And this is my sincerest of desires for you. But now I do need to draw this episode and this season to a close. So I want to say thank you so much for listening and trusting and taking action. Just let me know what questions you'd like me to answer on this podcast, because I do want to be able to give you what you need. So just head over to my website, get in touch, and I will see you all after a two week break back here on the 4th of July, which simply leaves me now to wish you a happy, healthy day. Thanks for joining us on the Lifestyle First podcast, making self-care as easy as one, two, three. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and we'd love it if you'd be kind enough to leave a review. To learn more or to arrange a consultation, please visit www.dralkapatel.com. See you next time.